The Time Trap The Classic Book on Time Management by Alec McKenzie Book Review. Hello everyone. Today we I am going to review the book, The Time Trap. The Classic Book on Time Management by Alec McKenzie. Wasting Time, It's Human Nature. A growing time management industry has developed since The Time Trap was first published in 1972. This industry, which helps people who have trouble getting organized, includes books, workshops, seminars, pocket diaries, calendars and organizer systems. Getting control of your time means facing up to the fact that you are usually the problem, not someone else. It means doing the hard work of changing well-established habits. It means holding your ground against the negative tugs of human nature, and coup. People need time management advice because most of the published rules about managing time contradict the laws of human nature. Because of innate human characteristics, such as ego, a desire to please, a fear of offending and a fear of new challenges, people often give in to time pressures, distractions and a failure to delegate. Other characteristics that make you vulnerable to time pressure include curiosity, insecurity, pride in your own abilities, envy of others, ambition and perfectionism. All these traits interfere with your ability to use time efficiently and well. Time is the only resource that must be spent the instant it is received, and it must be spent at one fixed rate, 60 seconds per minute, 60 minutes per hour. Due to human nature's conflict with the rules of time management, and due to these strong inborn psychological tugs, it can be difficult to gain control of your time. To tackle this, you must first become aware of these very strong tendencies in yourself and teach yourself to change. Nobody's fault but your own. Many people think that the cause of their time management problems is outside themselves. They think they can't control their work environment. However, the problem of giving into outside time pressures resides within yourself. You allow your time to be wasted. For example, you answer the phone when you are busy, but blame the person who called you. You delegate to someone, but then do much of the work yourself, because you don't trust the other person to do the work effectively. We cannot manage time. We can only manage ourselves in relation to time. We cannot control how much time we have. We can only control how we use it. Thus, you must examine your own habits and be willing to change them if they are interfering with your ability to manage time. You also must overcome misconceptions about time management, such as, I work better under pressure. No one does better work under pressure. Instead, you do the best you can under existing circumstances. Another common misconception is that real-time management will prevent you from being spontaneous. That's not true. Time management actually allows you to schedule your time more efficiently, so you have more freedom to do what you want. The advantage of time management. Time is a limited resource. You only have so much of it, and you can't get more. In effect, you cannot really manage time. You can only manage yourself in relationship to time. You can only control how you use the amount of time you have. The true cause underlying most time wasters is found within the person who allows his or her time to be wasted. When you control your time use, you will gain four important benefits. You will experience less stress. You will achieve a more balanced life, where you can better apportion your time between your work and your home, between your family and yourself. You will avoid the dangers of being a workaholic, spending an excessive amount of time working but being less effective in what you do. You will be more productive. You will more quickly achieve your personal and professional goals. The importance of planning. Planning is an essential element of time management. You must actively plan your day, rather than just letting it happen in response to others' demands. To make progress with time management, you have to look squarely at your own habits and be willing to do the work of changing them. Planning involves four key phases. Set long-range goals and list the objectives that are linked to these goals. Establish priorities according to each of these goals and objectives, based on how important they are in the long and short term. Understand your personal energy cycle and use it to guide you in setting up your ideal day. Use the three key building blocks, goals, priorities, ideal day, to create your personal plan for your day. Then, write it down. The gains that you can create by managing time are pointless unless you have a plan for using them to some purpose. When you set goals, start with a long-range goal and work backwards. 
This will help you determine the steps you must take to achieve this goal. These shorter range targets are your objectives. You can follow this process in setting both the professional and personal goals you are working towards. Planning your day, rather than allowing it to unfold at the whim of others, is the single most important piece in the time management puzzle. Each goal you set should be written down and have several key characteristics. Your goals should be demanding, so they motivate you to do your best. They should be achievable so you can accomplish them. Each goal should be specific and measurable, and should include a deadline. If you need other people's help to achieve a goal, you should have their agreement. Finally, your goals should be flexible, so you can change them as conditions change. In a nutshell, this is the process. Set long-range goals and the objectives linked to them. Establish priorities among those goals and objectives. Learn your personal energy cycle. From these three building blocks goals, priorities, ideal day, create a plan for the day and write it down. Prioritize your goals by creating a priority matrix, in which you lay out a list of the goals you want to accomplish. Then, rank them from 1 to 5 in terms of their long-range importance, short-range urgency, weight and priority. This will guide you in planning your day, so you can put your most serious energy toward achieving your highest priority goals. Establishing specific goals is the first step in effective time management. Create your ideal day. This scheduling guide sets out blocks of time for your major activities by category. Use it to schedule specific activities into these categories. For instance, you might lay this out in half hour, or one to two hour, time blocks, such as a time to review mail, schedule appointments, use the phone, etc. The ideal day is a template, in effect, for your daily plan. It indicates blocks of time for major categories of activities. Then, for each day's plan, you schedule the specifics in those major categories. From where you are to where you want to be. To set up your own time management program, start from where you are, keep a time log. Priorities are objectives that have been ranked in order of importance. Write down your top three to six goals for the day, and prioritize them. Set a time deadline for each one. Then, track all your activities as the day goes along. List the time you started that activity, the type of activity, the time you used, the priority of that activity and your comments about it. Record even short, trivial activities. Note interruptions and distractions. In listing your priorities for each activity, rate them from 1 to 4. Important, urgent, must do, activities. Important, should do, activities. Routine, could do or delegate, activities. Wasted or, why did I do that? Activities. This is one of the key values of priorities. They guide you in planning your day. They tell you where you should be putting your most serious energy. Keep your log close at hand while you are doing the activities. You can maintain it on a computer, if that is readily accessible. Make an entry in your log every time you change your focus of attention. This log clearly will show how you are using your time and where you are having problems. In fact, as you see these problems in black and white, you may start changing your time use. At the end of the day, look at your log and honestly evaluate your time use. Ask yourself a series of diagnostic questions. What time did you start your number one goal? How well did you achieve your main goals for the day? What were your major interruptions? These hard questions will help you work on improving these time management factors. Record your time use for at least three days so you can analyze the patterns the log reveals to you. This will show you your current time management habits. Once you have this information, you can begin the process of remodeling yourself, recognizing your biggest time-wasting habits and changing them. The 20 Biggest Time Wasters Here are the 20 biggest time wasters and some suggestions on how to avoid them. Management by crisis when crises occur they divert you from your priorities for the day. While you may have to deal with genuine emergencies, you can reduce the number of crises by advanced planning that focuses on identifying potential problems and preventing them from occurring. Telephone interruptions While it may be human nature to answer the phone, take steps to block interruptions. Drop the idea that the caller's need is too important to ignore. Screen your calls using whatever technique seems most effective for you from delegating them to an assistant to using an answering machine. Then, take the calls you want when you are ready. 
Inadequate planning work on doing first things first by setting up a planning system. Integrate your daily plans into a larger system that includes projections and monthly planning. Attempting too much delegate. Learn to say no to the boss and estimate your time better so that you don't take on too much at once. Drop in visitors overcome your need to feel important, to be instantly helpful or to be needed by others. Instead, deal with visitors' questions by setting up another meeting time with them, referring them elsewhere or encouraging them to work out their own solution. Ineffective delegation overcome your reluctance to delegate. Learn to delegate effectively. Choose the right person, give clear instructions, give the necessary authority, follow up and support, and coach as needed. Personal disorganization keep your desk clean, get rid of your to-do list and use an integrated organizer system. Designate a place for today's papers. Lack of self-discipline remind yourself that you are an organized, orderly person. Keep your goals visible, use an organizer system, set deadlines and plan your activities. Inability to say no listen to what the other person is asking of you. Say no, if necessary, give reasons and offer alternatives. Procrastination recognize that you are in control and make a commitment to change. Stop putting things off and do them now. Meetings make meetings more effective by having an agenda and starting on time. Eliminate meetings you don't need to attend. Paperwork screen the papers you get and handle them more effectively. Leaving tasks unfinished, use self-discipline to return to interrupted jobs. When you put a job down, leave it in good condition so you can resume working on it seamlessly. Inadequate staff help the people working for you to learn good time management techniques with training and guidance. Socializing reduce excess socializing. Use cues to indicate the end of social time. Confused responsibility or authority clarify who does what and identify each person's level of authority. Poor communication clarify the purpose of your communication, be a good listener, use the right words and apply other good communication techniques. Inadequate controls and progress reports use better monitoring and control systems. Incomplete information work out a system that makes sure you get the information you need. Travel cut down on unnecessary travel or wasted travel time. Have the other person come to you. Plan trips carefully and continue to work while you travel. Take aways. Most rules for managing time are contrary to the laws of human nature. To gain control of your time, you must become aware of certain tendencies in yourself and teach yourself to change. Usually, when you give in to outside time pressures, it is not due to outside forces. The advantages of time management include less stress, a more balanced life, greater productivity and better progress toward achieving your goals. There are four key phases of time management, setting long-range goals, establishing priorities, setting up your ideal day and writing down your daily plans. Prioritize your goals with a priority matrix. To change your time management abilities, start from where you are. Keep a time log. After at least three days, analyze your time log. Once you know your current time habits, you can begin remodeling yourself. To remodel yourself, recognize the 20 biggest time wasters and how to cure them. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe our channel for more videos.